What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and I got a special guest in the shop today with me, John Malecki, my co-host from the Made for Profit podcast. Today, we are making a set of cornhole boards. I built a bunch of cornhole boards in my time, and I thought what better project to do with Brad since it's quick and easy, and we can definitely show you guys some awesome tips. Absolutely, stay tuned, we'll show you exactly how we did it. We made this cornhole set from just two eight foot two by tens and a half sheet of plywood. You can also make these from 2x4s, but the 2x10s tend to be straighter and they have a clearer grain. We even had enough offcuts left over to make a ladder golf game over on John's channel. There's a link down below in the description for that video, so go check it out. After ripping each 2x10 into three strips, I set up an extended stop block on my miter saw stand to reach out to four feet. I cut the long boards for each set, and then I moved the stopped end and I cut the shorter ends. Now for a little style, we went with an inset painted top in a dark stained frame. John set up to cut the rabbit recesses on the top of the frame to hold the plywood tops. He ran all the boards through to establish the bottom of the rabbit first. Then he moved the fence in and lined up the blade to make the side cut on the rabbit. John ran all the boards through again and we had a perfect channel for the plywood tops to lay in. To cut the mitered corners for the frames, I went back to the miter saw and cut a miter on the end of each board. Then I set my stop block, flipped the board over, and made the angled cut on the other end as well. Using a wooden spacer block next to my metal miter stop helped keep the pointed end from the miter from creeping behind it, and using a clamp to hold the workpiece to the fence makes for a much smoother miter cut. After John was done with an impromptu gun show, we glued up the frame. Good help is so hard to find these days. We used a band clamp to hold everything together tightly, and after making sure the assembly was square, we secured each corner with countersunk two and a half inch screws. To cover up the screws, I went back and plugged them with three eighths of an inch dowels. I started off just putting the whole dowel in there and cutting it off, but that was a little bit too finicky. So I switched over to cutting the dowels first and then hammering them in but you might want to consider beveling the edges first to avoid this fail and the downvote. But I got them all in there and I cut the plugs with my flush cut saw and I finally got that sweet thumbs up from John. Next we moved on to making the tops. I cut a sheet of half inch plywood in half in the driveway, then I brought it inside to make the finished cuts on the table saw. With the tops being inset, we could easily get two tops out of one half sheet and still have regulation size. We test fit the tops in the frame and measure down and mark for the whole location. If you want the free plans for the build, there's a link in the description. You can get them all. and It has all the measurements and step-by-step -step instructions for you, so you'll know exactly how to set these up. To drill the six inch hole for the boards, I picked up this massive hole saw. And I'll have a link down below in the description for this as well and all the other tools that we used. With such a large hole saw though, it's really important to be careful and to keep the drill straight and true while you're drilling it. And if you don't, it can bind up and if you're not careful, it can twist your wrist when it stops. Now, using a handle on your drill or even a router to cut the hole are other good alternatives that are a little bit safer than using this monster. After cutting the holes, we eased the edges with a roundover bit and then sanded everything smooth with 150 grit sandpaper just to make sure it's nice and smooth for the hand when you're putting it inside to grab the boards. I painted each top with two coats of white paint and then we went back to the frame. Now, like I mentioned earlier, 2x10s tend to have better grain and less knots than a typical 2x4. So the sanding here goes faster and the finished piece is gonna look way nicer. And also, I could get used to having an extra hand in the shop. It definitely makes tedious tasks like applying stain go a lot faster. Now the last parts to make were the legs. I ripped the legs down so that they would fold up flush underneath the boards and had to account for the recessed top that we put in. We marked a centered hole on the end of each leg, one inch down from the top. And the tops of each leg are rounded to let them rotate freely. To lay out the curve, we used a little plastic cup and just traced around it. Next, I drilled 3 8 of an inch holes through each leg on the mark that we laid out. Now, if you're using a hand drill here, just make sure that this hole is as straight as possible so that the legs will fold up and down smoothly. John took the legs over to the bandsaw and cut to the line that we laid out. And this could easily be done with a jigsaw as well if you don't have a bandsaw. 
To cut the legs to length, we need to mount one of the legs to the frame for reference. We used a scrap of one by stock as a spacer, then John used the leg as a guide and drilled a hole through the frame. We temporarily mounted the leg to the frame with a 3 8 inch bolt, and we used a paint can and some scraps to raise the top of the boards up to the regulation height of 12 inches, and used the edge of the workbench to mark the cut line. This will make it level at this height when it's on the ground. I dialed in my miter saw and I cut all four legs with the angle that we had marked, and then we knocked off the pointed ends of the legs too. So now came the tricky part, applying these custom logos to the boards. We just celebrated one year of our podcast, Made for Profit. If you're a listener, thanks a lot for listening. So we got a set of vinyl decals for our new logo and my new FTBT logo as well. Then we centered and laid down the decal on the tops, leaving the transfer paper as a protective barrier. After that, we laid out some painter's tape down the length of each board so that we could do a gray accent stripe down the middle. I rolled on two coats of the gray paint above and below the logos. I just painted right over the logos because they were protected by that transfer paper. After the second coat was down, we peeled up the painter's tape to try and keep the paint from pulling away with the tape after that second coat dried. And it came off pretty clean, but the real chore here was pulling off the transfer paper from the vinyl. The Made for Profit logo wasn't too bad, and it came up pretty cleanly, and it was looking great. But my logo was another story altogether. And my logo has a ton of fine detail and some small strips of vinyl in it. And this proved to be extremely difficult to manage, and that thin gray line around it ended up getting pulled and distorted as we worked our way around, because it just really wanted to stick to the transfer paper. If I did it again, I'd probably just have them print a decal with a white background, and then die cut around the entire logo. When the tops were dry, we laid down a bead of glue in the rabbit of the frame, and laid the tops in place. I secured the tops around the frame with brad nails, and I later came back and filled those holes and covered it up with some touch-up paint. I also gave each of the boards three coats of a water-based polyurethane. Now the last piece was to mount the legs to the frame. We pounded in a bolt from the outside, and then placed a washer on both sides of the leg, and a lock washer and nut on the inside to hold everything secure. And I love the way these boards turned out, and I think the logos look really cool. Now, if you're a cornhole purist, you probably want a seamless top, but these boards still play fine, but they add a ton of style and class, and they're real head turners. You guys, if you're not already, check out the Made for Profit podcast. We talk business in the shop and help you monetize as a maker. We have a weekly show where we talk about hot business topics and interview with the people that are making the biggest splash in our space. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team and make sure you check out John's channel as well. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.